Welcome to Hewasoft's Money Boot Camp. Today the topic is budgets. A startup company should spend extra time budgeting for the first 12 months of its existence. Since there is no historical information to rely on, the budget becomes critical for planning purposes. Budgets are really about fixed costs within a company. Sometimes fixed costs are called running costs or overhead. We're talking about the infrastructure to support the sales of product or services. Budget items which are considered fixed costs include necessary elements like facilities, people, and services from outside professionals. Capital equipment, computers, and office supplies are also examples of budget items and fixed costs. For the most part, everything that is not included in variable costs associated with the company's product or service is a fixed cost item. The variable cost definition is defined in the Money Boot Camp series Gross Profit Video 1 and 2. Budgeting starts with a list of items. This list can be relatively short or extended. The point is to get as much of the potential costs identified and labeled as possible. Anything forgotten or left out could have a significant impact on the performance planning of the company. Most established companies create a chart of accounts, which is a list that is unique to the company's culture and the industry they serve. Since new companies have little culture or history, they must take care to identify and label as many reasonable classifications as possible for their specific industry. New items and classifications can be added as the company matures. Most budgets depict costs on a monthly basis for a minimum of one year. Budgets can serve many purposes. They are often used to compare the projection of future costs with what actually happened. This comparison of historical data helps to make estimates of the future more accurate. Budgets are also used to control or manage spending within a company. In this case, they are often called operating plans or business plans. When entrepreneurs seek funding, they are asked to make estimates of future spending, sometimes up to five years in advance. Coupled with budget information, most investors or lending institutions will also want to see projections of income from sales. Predicting future performance is called pro forma. A pro forma statement of income will show income less costs with the difference as profit or loss. In most cases, a startup will need a projection of future sales and costs prior to implementation of the business. The budget is an important part of this projection. Using the idea composer, a budget is provided in a statement of income style. A statement of income lists sources of revenue, variable costs, fixed costs, and operational profit for the period. The budget is the fixed cost portion of the statement of income. The budget page of the Idea Composer illustrates sales projections located on the top row, followed by the material and process costs associated with each product shipped. This information is derived from the product page and is the variable cost times the number of units predicted to sell. The unit prediction is from the forecast page. When the material costs and the process costs are added together, this becomes the variable costs, sometimes called the cost of goods sold or even costs of sales. When this row is subtracted from the sales row, the result is gross profit. The next section pertains to wages and inventory, subjects that will be covered in later lessons. For now, they are illustrated because the information has an effect on the budget. The top row of this section is from the payroll calculations and is considered part of fixed costs. This part is the main body of the budget and includes the fixed cost items anticipated for the 12 month period. It is considered good practice to show ample detail and any significant seasonal variations that might apply within the projected time period. Even minor variations can affect cash as we will see in the next section. When creating budget entries, it's a good idea to make notes explaining unusual amounts or situations. Notes make it easier to understand the assumptions and details the originator of the budget had in mind when it was made. 
This is especially true when it comes time to revise or modify the budget item. The bottom of the budget shows the difference between the projected sales and total costs for each month. The first row in the bottom section is the fixed costs for the month. The second row adds the fixed costs and the variable costs, which together become the total costs for the month. The results are sales minus total costs, sometimes known as operating profit. The sales totals are based on the number of units of sales predicted from the sales forecast. In the Idea Composer, the sales forecast appears like this. Returning to the budget, the third row shows the difference between sales and total cost for each month. This difference is known as operating profit. The bottom three rows illustrate monthly cash flow. The last row is accumulative, which adds and subtracts the monthly cash result and accumulates the difference. The red numbers indicate the negative cash predicted for that month. Another way of looking at the bottom row is a snapshot of the status of cash available or required for each specific month. In this example, the most negative amount is $1,789 in the second month, or the amount necessary to keep the cash flow in the black. The bottom row would also serve as an indication of how much revenue is required to stay in the black during the first 12 months. It also illustrates the amount of outside funds needed to make up the difference between sales and costs in order to keep cash positive at all times. Sometimes budgets include much more than sales, costs, and cash predictions. In larger organizations, assets and liabilities are also predicted as a part of the budget process. This concludes the budget session. In the next lesson, we will cover basic sales forecasting.